Let's talk about meter. Every single poem is going to have a definitive meter. This is to say it keeps track of how you say the poem to keep the author's intentions and make it sound rhythmic. There are three types of poetry we're going to focus on this year. Hendecasyllabics, elegiac couplets, and dactylic hexameter. I'm going to start with hendecasyllabics. We will also start with hendecasyllabics, so go ahead and take notes. The word hendecasyllabic is a Greek derivation. Hendeca in Greek means 11. Syllabic, syllables. So in a hendecasyllabic, you have 11 syllables. That should make sense. If you look on the screen, you can see the meter is pretty set. There's very little you actually have to figure out for hendecasyllabics because the rhythm is so defined already. The only real thing you have to do at this point is to get the hang of elisions, to get the hang of finding the vowels, to get the hang of the fact that I's at the beginning are actually J's. The first foot is what you're going to have to figure out. So this can be either a short long, a long short, or two longs. If you notice, on the meter thing there, it has U and a U underlined. Anytime you see that underlined U, it means it could be long or short. Another thing to note is anytime you see those slashes, that is a break of a foot. What I mean by that is that is the natural break in the meter. I do need you to put those breaks in and memorize where those breaks are. So at any given time, a hendecasyllabic poem generally is long, long break, long, short, short break, long, short break, long, short break, long, long. Let's go ahead and apply this to real life Latin. So go ahead and pull out Catullus 1, or it's on the screen, the first two lines we're going to do together. So the first thing you should do when you start meter, this is always the easiest to find because there are definitive ways to find them. The first thing you're going to look at is double consonants. So as you go through those vowels, first off, let me show you where the vowels are. Qui is actually a Q-U. In archaic Latin, it can also be a Q, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a C. Um, in this case, it's a Q-U-C, so we're just going to count that I. So the I is your first vowel. It has to be long because every first foot, the first one has to be long. So it has to be long. The next vowel is going to be the two O's in dono. You have those two. Lepidum has three vowels. Noem has two. And labellum has three. So something you're going to look for as you go through is long by position. You're going to look for double consonants. So as we're going through this, let's see, are there any double consonants? Keeping in mind, a double consonant can also apply across words. So I found one in the noem line. Noem labellum. After that U is an ML. ML. L is a liquid, so it's a little bit hard. L's and R's are liquid. By liquid, I mean it could be long and it could be short. So if you're ever counting on L's, for example, labellum has two L's. Well, it could actually just be one L and it would be the same thing. So you can't always count on those L's and the R's. In this case, the noem, that L does count as a second consonant. So the U in noem is going to be long. For the U-M in lepidum, I just now noticed, um, has a double consonant. It has the M and the N. So the U in lepidum is also long. The double L's in labellum are also going to be long in this case. So that E is going to be long. 
You can also check for X's and Z's because they're both Greek in origin. So they actually, anytime you see an X or a Z, like the word Rex, R-E-X, that's actually a double consonant without meaning to. So the E in Rex would be long, even though it only has one consonant because it's an X is two. We don't have any X's or Z's here, so that doesn't help. You want to check for elision, so let's see if we find any elision. An elision is where first word ends in either a vowel or an M, and the second word begins with a vowel or an H. H's are breath marks and don't count as vowels or consonants. So as we're going through this in this line, there are no elisions. You would have to have a word that begins with a vowel, and this line does not have a word that begins with a vowel. The next thing I tend to do is look in the back of the book to see which ones are long by nature. The dictionary in the back of your book, as well as any real Latin dictionary, will have long by nature already marked in there. If a syllable has a macron over it, like the ERE -E for second conjugation, that means it's long by nature. On scansion quizzes, you do get to look in the dictionary to look up long by nature, but on tests, you will not get to look up long by nature. So it would be helpful to you now to start being able to do it without a dictionary. And the way you do that is more by logic. So we have a couple done already, so we can go ahead and fill in some. So Hendeka syllabics is generally long, 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 short, short, long, short, long, short, long, long. That last one on every single poem that we're ever going to do, that last beat can be long or short. In this case, it's going to be short. To know that, you'd actually have to look up the U-M ending. The U-M ending there for second declension for accusative singular is short. So it is short in this case. And then you can go ahead and fill in what else you need. So the O and Dono, you're going to look it up and notice it's long by nature. So we have long, long, break, long, short, short, break, long, short, break, long, short, break, long, short. And we would read it we don't know lepidum no womb libellum. It would be really rhythmic like that. So the second line, we're going to start on that one. I've already finished it for you because it has an elision, so I had to mark it on a different program because I couldn't do it on this programming for the computer. So again, you're going to start by long by position. Another thing you can add in there, if you've already translated the poem, you know that arida is an ablative. Because you know it's an ablative, you know that it has to be a long A. So you can go ahead and mark the A in arida, the last A, if you know that. If not, ignore me. So as we're going through, mark long by position. Well, we have an XP. Not only is the X a double consonant on its own, but it has an X and a P. So it's actually a triple consonant. So the E in X polytum is going to be long. Ignore the elision because that's your next step, but it will elide. There are no more long by position. Your next thing would be long by nature, which you'd have to look that up. When you look it up, the A, the first A in Arida, is going to be long by nature. The U in Pumis is going to be long by nature. And the I in Exfoliatum is going to be long by nature. So as we're going through, you can fill in that first line because the I is not actually long by nature, and it's not long by position, there's no reason to be long there. And it doesn't have to be long for the meter, it can actually be short. So the I in Arida is going to be short, so it's long, short, break. Long, because you know that's a long A. 
Modo is always short, so long, short, short, break. Long, long by nature, short, there's no reason for it to be long, break. Now we have that elision, because we ended with an E, we started with an E, they're both vowels. So the way you mark an elision is you do a little U underneath that connects the two vowels, and you put the first vowel or the first U-M or E-M or whatever it is in brackets. This indicates that you don't actually say that vowel or the U-M. So the way an elision works is you don't pronounce the last syllable of the first word, but instead elide it with the first syllable of the second word. So, pumis expolitum becomes pumis expolitum. In essence, it deletes a, a, a whole syllable. So, that whole thing is one syllable, and we've already established that the E in expolitum is long, therefore the whole thing, the E's, the double E's, are both together one syllable that is long. The O is going to be short, there's no reason for it to be long, break, long, short, because that last syllable could be long or short, but if you look up U-M, second declension, accusative singular, you're going to notice that it is short. So there you have it. Two lines of syllabic. Keeping in mind that if there's no reason for a syllable to be long, if it's not long by nature, if it's not long by position, if there's no elision, then it's going to be short. Really, everything is short unless there's a reason for it to be long. Just keep that in mind and work it out like a logic puzzle. Some people like to work from the beginning, some people like to work from the end. Whatever helps you think better, do that.